everyone. Hello, world. So, um, thanks for Kago for inviting me. It's, um, it's an honor. It's also a pleasure to um, try to give something back to the community. And you will see that I've um, learned and owned so much uh, to the community here. So um, without further ado, I will dive into my um, small presentation. Um, so first of all, um, something about me, Anna's already mentioned a little bit uh, about myself. So I skipped the first two lines. Um, I think it's worth to um, introduce a little bit what the company Arian does. So um, we, we work with an enterprise um, big organization to provide training, to take on project. And we are also working um, as the company started and evolved. Um, you will see that it's quite interesting because uh, we didn't anticipate it to have um, customer inquiry from all over the world. So uh, as a startup, this has uh, been quite a journey. Um, so we will come back to this, uh, this bit uh, experience a little bit. Um, for now, I uh, just give you a forewarning that I, I really don't have all the answer. Um, we are all students in life. At the moment, we, we start out, I, I almost look like it's, it's the um, second stage of my career to redefine my career. And um, I'm just making, making the most of every moment and um, um, every step. Um, also, I don't really recognize myself as um, any kind of expert. And um, if you look at this, very famous uh, Dunning-Kruger effect. I'm probably in the lowest point very, very often in terms of confidence. Um, I think that side effect of competing on Kaggle, when, you, when you're really t um, competing against a lot of the top data science and machine learning engineers. Um, however, uh, one of the things you would learn as a consultant and probably one of the core skills is to, um, to suspend your disbelief from time to time. All right, so I will move on. As I say, um, despite the humble background and talent, I hope um, this talk could bring something back to the community and help to clarify some of the doubt. So um, what I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about um, a little bit on switching into data science. Um, this is a, one of the big theme in the in the conference, so I'm not going to deep dive into it too much. However, I will introduce to you uh, what my personal experience is into it, and I'm going to, of course, talk about working as a data science consultant. And in there, there are different kinds of scenario. You could be internal consultant, you could be an external consultant as a freelancer, or you could be an external consultant as a, as someone trying to build a startup. So we will look into um, each of these scenario. Um, and as I say, the next point is taking the faith, um, leap of faith of, of um, forgetting the career um, safety red net and take the deep dive into a startup scenario. So I will share what works for me so far. Um, there is a big elephant in the room. It's um, data science. Um, in fact, I don't think we have a good definition of what this big elephant is, um, I'm not going to address it here within the talk. We can have some discussion in the Q&A. Um, all these uh, concepts, machine learning, data science, artificial intelligence, I, I kind of bracket them in the um, data science for the moment. So um, it's probably not the correct model, but let's use this as a useful representation on the subject we have today. And in fact, I think uh, for a lot of us, what do we contextualize as data science is very much down to your background and your career. Right, so um, I try to um, represent my career so far as a, a gradient descent process. If you have learned machine learning, gradient descent is probably the, the core concept of everything. And um, as I dive into machine learning more and more and data science, I, I increasingly look at my career path as some sort of uh, optimization process and, and minimize and maximization process. Um, we will look into what are those metrics, but let's, um, let's start. So if you look at my career path, I, I did my doctorate degree. 
I, I did a bit of work on software development in terms of tester. And then 2014, I was working in a completely non-technical um, role. I was a skill manager. I was working in our wonderful company, uh, my dear ex-employer Airbus, working in there um, to define their career path for aerospace engineer. It's completely uh, unrelevant role. So, um, but it was interesting how this background fit into my um, current um, trajectory. I was also working as a project manager, dealing with um, IT supplier, dealing with um, um, 3D software. And the, the switch for me come at um, 2016, late 2016, when the time that um, it comes for Airbus to, to start their digital transformation, I was able to, um, due to my preparation, more or less starting at the end of my doctorate, up to 2017, I was um, already learning all the time, competing all the time. So by the time they, they starting to make the switch and starting to recruit internally for data scientists, I, I, I guess I was uh, one of the first guy on the list. Um, if I look at this kind of career graph, I, I can clearly see all the position I switch, uh, I switch into, especially the one in big corporate environment, they are very safe. They are very comfortable. I, I, now I look back, I, I think of this as what, what we call as a local minimum now. Now, um, what really every time that drive me to, to push through this kind of local minimum and look for something better is, is learning and continuous career development. And, and that's another thing I would put out for consultant in general, whether you are a data science consultant or data analytic consultant, uh, that is that kind of um, continuous um, hunting for knowledge is going to be the key point. I um, was lucky to, to become a cargo master in the middle of 2017. And then since then, it's more or less starting to prepare myself to um, look into a consultancy mode uh, and having uh, our own startup. Um, I will explain a little bit later, why do we do a startup? And why do we do consultancy? Now, um, I would say, um, as I say, I, I'm not going to deep dive into what makes this career switch successful or not. Indeed, I'm not going. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie that I can be certain I am successful. I'm still on my early journey. What I would say is, um, there are certain elements you need to do to prepare for your switch. It's it's a long journey. And let's say um, one of the elements is technical knowledge. So for myself and for many of the friends that I've been competing on Cargo, get to know in di different kinds of data science network, that preparation of technical knowledge leading up to the point for your first data science job is critical. Um, I use one of my uh, long-term Cargo um, partner as an example. Uh, my friend's name is uh, Chen Ken, who was starting out as a, an anesthetic doctor in Shanghai. And it, we basically got to know each other via um, the early course in Coursera. And then we were in the same WeChat group and we started to compete on Kaggle as a goose head. Like, it's like the Kaggle loop together. And uh, if you look at the number of certificates this guy does, it's, it's just phenomenal. I mean, um, so that is really the kind of uh, hard work he put behind to switch his career. And now he's um, working as the AI director for one of the uh, very successful China startup in um, medical cases uh, diagnosis. And um, you see that um, that's on top of competing on Kaggle. So uh, very luckily we, we, we become a Kaggle master almost at the same time achieve our gold medal last year in the Cora challenge. And we both, uh, uh, NLP turns out to be both of our um, common skill set. So that's one story I would, I would give out to you. It's not my story, but if you look at what these people does, um, I, I really um, suggest you to consider the time and effort and make it in a way that it's integrated into your life to, to, to take on those knowledge 
And there is another very interesting story that has come out. So we finished the, the toxic common classification challenge about two days ago. And um, the, third, um, the third place team, uh, um, there was a friend called Ryan Chesler, and he shared his knowledge in the um, toxic um, competition forum. Uh, I recommend you to have a look. It's a long and half heard, um, half felt story about how he started from his um, parents' garage doing um, startup without qualification and what kind of course he did, where he goes to. Uh, I, I recommend you to have a look at his story to really get the inspiration and where to um, get those uh, knowledge. So um, this is my personal situation. Um, for me, the, by far the, the most uh, source of knowledge is from Kako, um, partly because I'm not very really good at handling funny stuff. Uh, when, when it's fun, I just head dive into it. So um, you see, this is the hours I spend on each of the Kako challenge that lead up to, the, um, to, to getting a master, a Kako master. So within two years, I probably spent 13 hours, 1300 hours into those competition. So uh, I would say it's most of the weekend and evening, uh, Christmas evening, I, I would have been cargoing away. And so um, it's immense amount of fun and, and learn a lot of things and um, have a lot of friends. So um, for me, that is the channel to get my um, tele. So, Professional network is the another element I would say um, start building when you um, when you're thinking about career change. So we we are in a lucky age that it's so easy to meet up with like-minded people in in meetup via Slack, LinkedIn. It's a source to contextualize what's going on in data science and in other sector. And there are more specific group. I, I know the WeChat, some of the WeChat group in, in, in the, our Chinese Kakoda network is phenomenal. And of course, we know um, for our Russian friend, the uh, uh, Russian speaking friend, the open data science AI network again is phenomenal. I'm sure there are others. I, these are some of my friends that I got to know in the last two or three years. It's, it's working with these people and, and um, learning from these people that uh, facilitated the career change. So I will move on a little bit. So um, again, um, these are not the only ways. I would say these are some of the good ways that I talk about, but uh, try all the potential revenue that you find that's suitable for you. Upwork, we, I, will, I will touch upon Upwork a little bit, but Upwork is a good place to start picking up small package, even when you're full-time working. And then you have Contiax, Contopian, Numerai. These are other more specialized competition platform to, to compete and to pick up knowledge and potentially in Numerai's case, even dive into cryptocurrency a little bit. OpenAI, it's another platform. If you are specifically interested in things like um, reinforcement learning, I think it's a good place to start playing with reinforcement learning there. And the one thing I, I haven't put out here, um, I think everyone will, will find is your workspace. So um, if you're working in traditional sector or um, sector that's yet to be deeply impacted by AI, it doesn't hurt, or, or data science, sorry. Um, it doesn't hurt to, to work with your uh, management structure if you have a, a full-time employee to um, define some goal or stretch yourself toward data science. So I was able to do quite a few, um, if not data science, but data analytic, data mining up, um, project. I was doing um, handwritten character recognition for, for the company before uh, for industrial drawing um, since 2015. So always uh, pick those opportunities. They, they are lying around. And um, those kind of big moment for organization to say, wow, we now need data science. It's either already happened or it's gonna happen very soon, I believe. So um, last thing, I, I, I just can't resist to put this up. So um, try to focus. We, again, we are in a very inter interesting world. Um, a lot of topic are popping up 
or busting down. So we know cryptocurrency is taken a lot in the last few weeks. However, things like blockchain are still going strong as underlying technology. Um, I would say if you really find what you what you like to do, what you what you what you want to um, deep dive into, give some time. Um, personal rules rules of rum is uh, one hundred hours. The, that is the hours I believe you will need to um, internalize some of the concepts and contextualize into what you are doing in a everyday activity. So um, that's my experience. Um, so I, I hope this is a useful guide for you guys. Right, so uh, next bit, now that I, I have my skill set, I have made my switch, then why, why to do consultancy? Um, the biggest positive thing about consultancy for me is I, I get to really deep dive into, um, deep dive in a sense that I can spend good amount of time in many different uh, use cases. And I don't have to go into an environment to say, okay, I need to, in 20 years time, I might be doing the same thing. I mean, all the time, what I trying to minimize in my gradient descent, my set is my bottom. What I want to maximize is um, opportunity to work with interesting people and interesting things. So for instance, in our consultancy small business, uh, we already been talking to educational sector about mentoring and training. We talked to um, energy sector about price prediction on, on petroleum, fraud detention from the bank, search and recommendation in um, grocery shop. We talk a little bit about robotic control with our, our friends in aerospace and telecom and so forth and so on. So um, the opportunity to, to go into different uh, vertical for me, it's uh, really, really interesting. And it, it's, um, it turns out to be uh, my preconception of everyone is doing this, doing data science and machine learning. It's not so quite correct. At least it's not there yet. So um, that's my career so far. And that's what I've done leading up to my switch. And that's why I do consultancy. Um, so the next part, it's really the, the bit that I think uh, I would like to share with you uh, in terms of what I what we thought we've done, uh, done well and um, what are the leverage for people to go into this sort of data science uh, consultant role. So first of all, um, there are two kinds of consultants. It's really clear to me. There's an the inter internal one and external one. The one that working within the company to fulfill the um, request from different department and the one that working outside the company and treating the company as the customer. And then there are different kinds of external consultant, the one who are working as freelance and the one who try to build a startup. So um, for different scenario, there are probably different um, requirement. However, um, I would I would make this claim here that I think for a lot of data scientists, you're gonna have to operate as a consultant one way or the other. Um, unless you're working for Google, Netflix, Amazon, all these big giant tech firm, where you can get to be very very close with um, uh, machine learning algorithm optimization, um, large amount of data. If you are not in those environment, if you are in um, the sector where they are yet to be fully impacted by uh, machine learning and data science, the chances are you're gonna have to learn how the business and how the process work in those sector. Even you are in the same company, you may have to work with different department. You may have to under figure out uh, their, their requirements you may be working with a new customer. So I would say when, when, I, when I was given this topic, I was thinking about consultant, but the more I think about it, actually we, all, we are all consultant one way or the other. So I would recommend you really think about one of the big, um, biggest point about consultant, it's, it's having a mind frame to learn all the time. Second is to uh, um, listen and communicate. Now, I will move on a little bit from here now. 
So um, for a loss of people like me, I uh, say I, I'm 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 close to forty. I probably missed the biggest, uh, the the nicest point to start on my career for a data scientist. I wish I'm fifteen years younger, starting on college, and learning machine learning, doing cargo when I'm younger. But uh, I'm not there, and I think a lot of us are not there. And I I also observe that a lot of the company when they are recruiting people, they are not really recruiting in a way that's fair for career changer. That's just my observation. Um, but um, I would say for people who are having 10 years or so into, into their career, you have your own um, advantage in a sense that one way or the other in, in different part of an organization, you are always gonna touch into this kind of subsystem, finance, human resource, operation, business, customer service, marketing, IT, and, and all these subsystems are gonna be impacted by data science one way or the other. So the chances are your existing knowledge and your existing um, experience can, can be used and can be leveraged as a very good backbone to build on. I mean, think about all these different kind of um, machine learning application. And all I can see is this, this, this application is yet to be identified how, how it can contribute and add value to um, different aspect of the organization or different aspect of the society in general. So um, once domain knowledge, I believe is critical at this point, as soon as we start thinking about how um, how data science is lead to uh, lead it to be applied beyond the um, tech sector or the tech enable um, enterprise, and so in my personal case, yeah, um, my semantic research background basically become my precursor for the NLP project I'm doing today. My um, skill management background, nothing to do with technology at all, set me, set me up very nicely to be a data science training provider. And I'm also mentoring students from, um, from a Japanese customer. And my aerospace background essentially um, put me in a very good position to work with uh, engineering and manufacturing clients. So this is just my experience. Um, people from their different background can probably frame their story in a way that's very beneficial for your personal career ambitions. So um, key message here, find your own niche. The next bit, networks, network networks. So it works in a very strange way, networks. Um, that's that's the biggest feeling, one of the biggest feelings, especially when you're working as a startup. Um, so two stories here, our first major customer. So I told a friend about machine learning in 2016, and then she started to promote this idea within her manufacturing company. By the time I left, my friend said, why don't you talk to our VP? And we had a good, very good conversation with the VP of technology. And within two months, we have our first uh, major corporate customer on board. So you, you just could not foresee this would become the case when I, when I got to know my friend and started to teach her machine learning. The other one, it's um, another one our pot potentially might become a big customer. We are working with them already. Basically story is met a friend who is <laughs> in Paris ASO last year who happened to be a fellow calculator who runs a chatbot company. And then um, my calculator's friend's friend in Hong Kong asked him about NLP support. And then he recommended us. So now we are helping this um, new customer to build their AI platform. So this kind of network, it, you, you could not foresee how it would happen. And we have um, all kinds of story coming out. We have a customer call from Seattle and customer asks where we work. 
we say each of us work in Airbus for 10 years and the guy laughed on the other hand because he worked in Boeing for 20 years. So <laughs> this kind of story is it's very nice. It, it really, the, the network works in a way that um, to construct trust, it's very really useful. So uh, what I would say is to make friends, um, be kind and don't necessarily have to ask for immediate return. Generally it pays back. So um, the other thing is the mind frame of a consultant. I think um, check your own bias. As in a machine learning, you have bias as a machine learning model. I have my own doubt before I start out. So I thought that um, business decision maker wouldn't want to talk to a small cost, uh, business like us. But as it turns out, a lot of the large organization now are setting up their innovation cell and they're very keen to work with startup. And we, 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 are, we, are, we are talking about really top tier um, A-list company. This is, this is the Airbus in aerospace, the um, big telecom company in, in telecom industry, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I was thinking business may prefer to buy off the sale tool for machine learning toolkit. But turns out a lot of them also want tailor uh, max service. I was thinking people may not be interested to work with people like me who has been in a uh, big enterprise for 10 years because they may want to work with exciting people coming out from startup industry or, or tech company. But it turns out our professional record is uh, very recognized Rec very recognizable quality for us because exactly because we are not the 20 years old new from college and decided to try to uh, make a hit and run. We are not that soft guys if, you, if they look at our CV. So that turned out to be very useful for our, uh, a very useful asset for us. Another one is I, I thought machine learning, data science, everybody's talking about it. It must be everywhere and I'm not expert. I'm not expert on all the algorithm. I'm definitely not an expert on big data. Another big term out there. But um, experience so far is most of these uh, setter are only just starting out. So I would say be on a network, be on your, um, your previous uh, experience and you can always find a way to add value. So um, the next bit, um, go on the offense with a purpose. Um, this, this method has been useful, really useful for us. So we've been going to different hackathon. Hackathon that's sponsored by uh, enterprise entity or government partnership with enterprise entity. Um, these are the opportunity for us to showcase our capability to uh, enterprise customers. So on the left one, you see we, we went for a um, hackathon and we won it for, uh, for making a chatbot for Dodge Telecom. So this is probably the, uh, probably the uh, renaissance of the United States, the uh, Tesla of, um, of Australia, the China Telecom of the Chinese market. Um, so we win it and then we were invited back for their marketing day. So we have really, really good experience with their marketing day as a potential provider. And bonus of that, uh, I got invited to Facebook uh, FAIR, the Paris Research Center to have a really good exchange with our Facebook friends. Um, so that's another story, but it's interesting. So another hackathon, another win for us, this time it's for process segmentation. Um, it's interesting because when they put up the process segmentation hackathon, immediately in my mind, my, my uh, thought was I've done this before in the, um, um, the, the brainwave recognition challenge a couple of years back. There's data set out there. There was a cargo challenge where you detect where the hand's moving by looking at the brain sensor. So it, it, um, all those time spending on cargo, it come, come back to help us actually. So um, again, by winning this kind of challenge, we get to um, we get we get a green light essentially to go into this kind of uh, enterprise. So um, 
both of these will be very interesting prospect for our company in the coming months. So um, this is um, maybe more for the freelancers out there. So embrace a new way of working, I would say. Um, what works for me most is um, the Upwork platform. Um, there are other platforms out there. There are, um, the, I think there is a platform called the Freelancer. And then there is a platform called um, um, Stack Overflow have their own remote job application places. Um, so this is a um, good place to kick off not only your original, uh, when you're still full-time employee, you can, you can do this to pick up your experience. It's also a good way to kickstart your freelance career. Once you um, get a few small packages down out of the way, you starting to build your credibility. And well, um, for me, in my case, after a few months, I'm now um, having more invitation than what I could fulfill. And bonus for me is um, people on those platforms are almost always very interesting guy. And um, Upwork for me um, has the um, good capability also to minimize the, the administration fee. They look after your uh, VAT tax if you're not um, company registered. And um, you can actually also operate it with friends together as an agency. So um, I recommend you have a look. Um, for those of us who are trying to um, build a startup as a consultant, um, my biggest recommendation is to find a co-founder um, so here with Arian, my co-founder is Marcus, who has got background in aerospace, F1 engineering, but not data science. Um, he, he, as a person, he's, he's better than me, a lot better than me at negotiation, managing cash flow, and also at the, um, he is by himself an engineering expert. In, in a spe um, specialist in composite material. So he helped us in many ways in when we engage with a manufacturing and engineering customer to frame the problem in a way that um, easily communicated with um, our end user. And also because he had a really, really different mind frame to myself and the fact that we disagree all the time, but the disagreement actually helped to make things work better so it's a little bit like on cargo, we, when you try to blend two models together, neural network and linear models, you usually end up with a better result because you have a diversity of opinion there. So um, yes, that's the key point. Um, this is a big slide. I'm not going to deep dive into it, but I would say try to work with people and develop, develop relationship with people with complementary skill sets. The problem owner, the data engineers, the front end, the UX people. I mean, I, I hate doing UX. I mean, as a, I'm just a back end guy. But without without those people, it's very hard to deliver a um, end to end data science product. The data analyst, and um, the last bit I would say is to try to find opportunity to work with other kind of geeks. The geeks in the 3D printing, the geeks in making things, the gigs in agriculture, um, those are the people who will help you to unlock use cases and customer in other sector. So um, getting to the end of my presentation, I say, um, I, I would like, this is tribute of course to um, Professor Hawking, um, but intelligence is the ability to, to adapt to change. So as a startup, this is what we are facing every day. I would say I've never been able to uh, accurately plan I will be doing in two weeks time since we start up as a business. At the point, at the moment, our current challenges are, and feel free to um, drop us some feedback or, or suggestion. We are, we are trying to switch from freelancing mode to a project team mode because um, the level of interest in grow, we are now no longer to just uh, for me to do freelancing. And um, the question is how to scale. We have um, several um, colleagues who work with us closely, but um, there is a dedicated 
um, balance between having more people and having the financial cap working capital to support a bigger workforce. So those are our challenge now. And the next one as a data science consultant is the most frequent question we get asked is where is our focus? Almost all the marketeer we talk to would ask us, where's your focus? And um, actually at the moment, I don't, I, I, it's very hard to define the focus. I just find um, different set of different vertical are all very interesting in its own way. I, um, so this is something we continuously work on. I'm hoping to, get, hoping to get to a point that we can define the market better and we can identify one sweet spot that we can we can really, really de dedicate our resource to add value on. But so far, it's, it's just a fun process and particularly I'm not in a big hurry to find out the answer. Um, the last bit, uh, it's about product. Um, so I would say if you talk to any kind of investor and say you're doing consultancy, they will probably say in your way. We are not the, the, the star by by VC of any stretch of imagination. We are um, people from the uh, VC sector, they look at product, they, they're looking for things that give them 10, 20, 30% of um, return on investment. So we're not that kind of company. So one of the key questions we will ask ourselves is going on, going forward as a company, do we want to uh, work on that space? Do we define some product? So, so that's these are the stuff that we are we are working on today. So, if you start out as a um, data science consultant, especially going down the startup route, these are some of the questions you're likely um, to be asked. So, uh, that's my um, presentation. I for now I'll say thank you to Kako. I specifically mentioned um, the Kako Loop community, which um, I, I engage and have a lot of friends in. And um, I can take question. Awesome. Thank you so much, Yifan. That was really, really deep. And we're getting lots of positive comments on YouTube and Slack just about how insanely helpful That's this is, uh, <laughs> actual words. So I'm going to dive in with some questions. And I'm going to try to group them a little bit because you, know, you touched on Kaggle and how you became a Kaggle noob and how that's helped your career a little bit. So just to follow up on that. One question is just what were the main building blocks that took you from a Kaggle newbie in 2015 to a Kaggle master in 2017? Um, I think the main building block, um, the one thing I would say is work out a way to fit Kaggle into your life. Um, you're talking about your weekend, your evening, your time with your family and kids. Um, so I think that is the one thing that's most important because um, calculating takes a lot of times. Um, I would say on a competition high time, I'm, I would be 20, 25 hours. And I was talking to Mario um, Casanova yeah. and he said he was spending up to 60 hours on it. So I don't know how he works. I could not work in this <laughs> way. Um, so time is one thing. I mean, once you start in a dedicated time, uh, machine learning is one of those things that it's really hard not to be good at once you spend in time on. I would That's an inspiring thing to say. Um, and then somebody asked, "Do you really? did you really keep track of how many hours you spent on each competition? How did you do, do it? And then I how would- How do I do it? <laughs> um, can I share the screen? I mean, I have Excel spreadsheet. Essentially, I, I, I have my own time booking since uh, 2007 because I was working full time and was writing my doctorate thesis. And I find that if I don't check my time to spend on my thesis, I will never finish my doctorate thesis. And that kind of practice just carry on. And, and when I start in to tackle, I, I just put my time into it. So, so that kind um, of discipline, yeah. having a way of making it. it it's become right. an obsession, put it that way. <laughs> so, um, but it, it's useful for me to contextualize how much time I need to work on something. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so quickly switching into questions more about, you know, your consulting experience. Somebody asked, in data science consulting, is it better to be broad or to be focused on a narrow application field? Um, and then, especially when you're starting out. I, I, I don't think that matter a lot, actually. If you're bored and if you can do like a full stack thing from, from uh, backend 
to play with data to build a front end, fantastic. Why not? Um, that it in a way it's it's very good. But in some point you're gonna have the people who are horizontal to work with people who are vertical. I, I would say. Yeah. So yeah, especially find way to to work as a team, even if you're not building a startup. Find people who you can work with as a team. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we have a lot of people, you know, starting out in their careers right out of college, maybe. Um, and some mm -hmm. people have asked, uh, let me see, where was that question? While you're kind of assembling relevant experience, so if you're just out of university, um, how do you get into the consulting route? Um, is it possible to get into consulting without work experience? Or should it's work possible. Yeah. Um, this is not necessarily data science question. In fact, if you look at company like Accenture, company like Capgemini, and to some extent IBM, um, what they do a lot is they, they still take on the promising graduate and they will send them into um, big company like Airbus or Mercedes-Benz, you name it. And they will, they will send them in, in a way that um, they work with some senior consultant. So uh, what you would, we, what I would say is, um, if you really want to want to go into the consultancy role and start thinking about your your soft skill, communication skill, and things like process mapping skill, for instance, and, and analytic skill, so you because those are the skill you will be um, you need to develop when you when you go into a um, consulting uh, context. Okay, yeah. um, and then again, as a job hunter, can you talk about what the differences or some of the differences are between looking for a data science job at a company with um, kind of domain expertise, like a telecom or aerospace, or looking for a job in a consulting company? Um, I think for me, it's uh, more applicable to just talk about uh, aerospace or consulting environment, um, or maybe in a big organization, I would say, because in a big organization, what happened is within those environments, you will have the internal job board and you will have internal network. Um, for instance, when I was in Airbus, they were building up the data science center of competence. Put your name up there. If you are in that kind of environment, put your name up there. Um, look for the internal um, training avail uh, availability. When I was in Airbus, we will actually get to do our um, Udacity, Udacity machine learning nano degree. They were actually funding it. And I think more and more organizations are going to do that. Um, then. In terms of consultant company, um, not myself, but um, a family member, and what she, what she get to do is um, what's just, just apply away. Those company would go to graduate scheme. They will have their own assessment center. I think um, passing interview question, I'm not the best guy to answer, and, but we already have a, a loss of coverage in the conference. So I do um, rec fully, fully recommend to look at um, other friends uh, presentation and the panel yeah. debate. And you know, just kind of going off of that, you said you were at the top of the list um, at Airbus when they started recruiting internally for the data science team. So I'm just wondering, you know, how did you get to the top of that list? You know what kind of positioned you well? I, for I guess one, once you spend certain amount of time within an industry, within a company, um, for the better and worse, you get a certain tag. So in my case, because I was working on case-based reasoning systems and I deliver something that helped to uh, maintain aircraft. So my name was known that I could do some, some things basically. Um, if you say I can do a very qualified Excel spreadsheet, double-sided double, double -sided as a search engine, that's what I did. Um, I would say pick project. Pick, pick interesting project if you can, and really get to know people. Um, company organization, you, the, the best way to bypass uh, organization silo is um, create network, internal network. Yeah. And I think increasingly company are also doing hackathon now. So if you have those opportunity, uh, and go. So when you're just starting out, is it possible or even a good idea to do pro bono consulting work to get a feel for consulting and also to get some experience that you can talk about with other potential customers? To get, I'm uh, sorry, I missed that bit, to get, 
to do um, pro bono work in order to build your pro bono as in time and material as in um, like for free so not getting oh oh, I see to get some projects on your resume or something I haven't done anything like that Um, I was I, I don't have a strong preference on that one. I think for, for people who are starting now in their career, you, you would have that choice. And I wouldn't recommend against it. Um, it would really well work for someone, especially for people. Let, let's say uh, for a charity organization, for instance, if you can do that kind of work, I mean, we, we have cargo challenge on um, vet and animal adoption for those kind of organization. I think it really works. Um, for enterprise, um, bigger organization, manufacturing organization, I believe you could get paid job. Yeah. Right. So you might be selling yourself short. Right. Yeah. Um, in that vein, you know, what is your process for determining how much to charge your clients? Um, and uh, I know you do this in different. <laughs> working <laughs> on that one. <laughs> um, so I, I, for me, with um, our experience in the uh, manufacturing and engineering sector, we charge um, what other supplier would charge. It's more, it's less to do with what we charge. It's more to do with um, how to get to the decision maker, because in big organization they have this thing called a tier supplier system. You, as a small guy, sometimes you get, become the supplier of the supplier to go inside the company. And that's the game we decided not to play. So I think that is more important than what kind of rate for this kind of organization. Um, because you, 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 can, you can charge it, they can happily pay if they agree to pay you. Um, the other side for uh, things like Upwork, I, I kind of started low and maybe even too low uh, and worked my way up. Um, I'm now getting to a point that potentially there are people, my friend who, who's uh, working as an Upworker and he decided to stop doing it. He may pass on his uh, customer to me. Then maybe we, we can look at whether he's already charging them. Um, I'm, this, this is work in progress. I mean, Gradually, gradually move my rate up a little bit. But um, if you ask my business partner, he may say, you're charging too low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned that hackathons have been a good way of you know, doing some word of mouth marketing and proving your chops. Where do you find information about hackathons? Um, okay. So um, there are, I, I, find, I think first thing I find is a meetup. Meetup in, in, in the UK, for instance, have like a meetup collecting hackathon information. There are several websites out there. I, I, I guess you can search for it or I can leave some of those websites in the um, Slack channel that allow you to look for hackathon. I mean, uh, a lot of these hackathon are student focused. So for me, it's less applicable, but maybe for, for some of the younger friends or some of the people who are finishing from study, that's a good one. Um, but there are companies, for instance, to uh, specialize in organizing hackathon for um, organizations. So you can follow those companies. Again, I can I can put some of those names out there. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. So we have a, um, a broader question, which is, you know, you talked about using Kaggle competitions um, and MOOCs to build skills and qualifications before kind of switching into a consulting role. Mm-hmm. So um, like at what point, can you make that switch? How do you kind of identify that you are now maybe employable? Um, for me, it was very clear at a point that um, I was lucky in a sense that I feel it's almost the start aligned. I, I got a cargo master. So I, I thought at the time, actually, I, I can now ease a little bit on the competition side. I can do something for real. It hadn't turned out the case. But, <laughs> but uh, I go to a cargo master point and say, okay, I, I, I will switch. It feels like I get to the, the half time of my life. Um, but then the other thing is um, we, we actually try to launch um, with some company support as an internal startup. And that didn't quite went to the plan. We spent something like 18 months on that. So after that process, it was more or less at the same timeline, we say, okay, let's try something new. 
Yeah. So uh, for me, it wasn't it wasn't a a, a a difficult decision to make that jump. Um, I guess for other people, as you build on your um, competence and opportunity become arise, grab them. And um, this is not something you can plan really. Mm-hmm. You, you got to look at yourself as a startup. As a startup, you don't plan. You, you can plan, but anticipated change. Yeah. So, you know, we you kind of touched a lot on, you know, time and time is a limited resource and something that you have to be very specific about how you invest. Um, so, you know, for people that are trying to switch careers, so they, you know, they have less time, obviously, they have a full-time job. Would you recommend using platforms like Upwork to build your portfolio and resume in order to try to switch careers? Or do you think it's more beneficial I, to spend that time in competitions and like personal projects? Um, for me, I would recommend so. But um, for me personally, I use Kaggle more I, uh, to some extent, um, Numerai. But um, for get real traction, I think Upwork is a really good one or other kind of platform. Um, take on smaller project. Um, keep applying. Keep up. If you apply 100 application, they go all get rejected, no problem. You still have full time job. I mean, keep applying. Yeah. That is that is the way to go. Yeah. And then I think one more question um, is: Is it good to develop expertise in big data technologies in addition to ML modeling as a way to grow horizontally? I think. Yes, although the two texts that I, be, I be, believe is each is getting deeper. So at some point you have to decide, for instance, do I want to go into a uh, deep neural network all the time? Because it's, it's really like making chemical reaction. You wait by the model for three days to get something out. Um, on the other hand, you, you can deep dive into things like um, the big data architecture from Google. Um, I I don't see there is a confliction there, but um, you you got to find out a way to allocate your time to take on both. Um, personally, because I, I I get to a point to say, okay, actually, um, the big data side of thing, I know friends who can do it very well and do it much better than I do. Why don't I just try to work with those people?